I want you to think of uh, perhaps there's someone in your life right now whom you love. You're in a relationship. Uh, or perhaps you haven't met the person that you'd like to have as a life partner. I can tell you that when I decided that I wanted to ask uh, the person who would eventually be my life partner, I asked her to marry me, I, I decided I wanted to do something kind of big. And so I discovered that she was going on a, a girl power weekend canoe trip. And I don't know, men, I don't know if you know this or not, but sometimes... Uh, the women in my life, anyway, will, uh, will, sudden, will often step away and say, I don't need you guys, we're going to go away, we're just, mm-hmm, that's right, we're going to go do our thing, <laughs> right? And the guys are like, where are you going? Nothing, we just don't need you, you're not invited. So I find out that they're going on this girl power weekend canoe trip, and, and I, I decide, oh, wow, that's cool, you got all kinds of time to plan, okay, so I think it might be really neat if I could, if I could somehow figure out how to get a float plane and maybe show up on the canoe trip, that'd be neat. And then I got all excited. You know that feeling when you're just like, yeah, that's really cool. And you're talking to another friend and they're like, yeah, you should totally do that. And then someone else looks at you, uh, that's really hard. <laughs> and someone else is like, let's be realistic here for a second. Like, come on, it's hard. So what I ended up doing was I started phoning uh, friends and phoning anyone that I met anywhere and said, hey, do you by any chance know anybody that has a float plane? And they're like, there aren't very many of those around. So a lot of people are like, no, I don't know anybody with a float plane. And then I, I discovered a friend of mine's father. Uh, I went to school with him. And, and, and he said, my father has a float plane. Cool, put him on, please. So I ended up chatting with him. And I told him that Girl Power canoe trip on the Chinaguchi waterway north of uh, Sudbury, about four and a half hours north of Toronto. And, uh, and uh, it'd be kind of cool, land on the lake, you know, ring, what do you think? And he's like, wow, that sounds kind of exciting. Yeah, let's do that. I was like, cool, okay. And then months go by and lots of planning and lots of discussions and things. And, and I eventually find a way to go to a, a ring maker and I buy a ring because they call me traditionalist, but some rules change. And for me, I decided I wanted to go this, this route. So I bought a ring and, uh, and I got her best friend to come to the ring store. And I said, here, come to, check it out. This is the ring that I've decided. What do you think? Is she going to like it? And her best friend, Nicole, was like, yeah, oh, that's going to be great. She's going to love that. And this is on the Wednesday. And this whole thing is going to be happening on the weekend. So I'm, I'm excited. I leave the ring place. I've got the ring in my pocket. And I'm driving home. And I, and I get home. And, and Sheila's there. And she's not, she's not happy. And she said, listen, mister. We've been living together for a long time. I'm going away on a girl power canoe trip weekend. The girls and I are going to go hang out. You, sir, you have some thinking to do because we've been living together a long time, and the ring's in my pocket going, let me out, let's do it now, let me out, let me out. I said, you stay right there, we're doing this on my timeline. <laughs> so we proceed to have this, uh, let's call it a disagreement, shall we? We have this uh, disagreement. And the next day, uh, her girlfriends come over, and we're all like, oh, nice to see you, good to see you as well. Have a nice trip. Okay, so we're not hugging either. Okay, cool, so see you later, go on your uh, canoe trip. Friday morning, I go into work, and I'm excited because I'm doing this on Saturday. Friday morning, I go into work. I'm like, okay, this is going to be amazing. And the phone rings. I pick it up. Hello. And it's this dude uh, from Peterborough who said, that, yes, we could use his plane. He goes, hey, Chris, listen, uh, regarding tomorrow, um, I've been doing some research into the weather patterns, and I've got to be honest, I built this plane myself. It's a 1965, fully restored, took it apart, put it back together myself, Piper Super Cub. And uh, to come from Peterborough to Toronto, uh, land in Toronto, and then take off from Toronto, go up to Sudbury, fly around Sudbury, land on some lakes, fly back to Toronto, fly back to Peterborough. I gotta be honest, I'm, I'm worried a bit about gas, I'm worried about the weather, I'm worried about the plane. I, I apologize, I'm sorry to do this to you, but um, we, uh, this isn't gonna happen, we can't do this. You know that feeling? You know that feeling? Right there, that one, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> Regardless of where you started, regardless of what your goals are, regardless of what you want to do, if you start embarking on something big, you're going to find somebody that either says no or something that can stop you, yes? Now, nothing stopped you from coming here today to this TEDx, so I'm going to suggest that, well, even if something had tried to stop you, if you wanted to come here badly enough, you would have made it here. So I wonder how that applies. Well, if you want to do something badly enough, don't let anybody talk you out of it. Instead, double down your efforts. 
So I started calling everybody in the province. Uh, maybe you got a phone call from me. I was like, hey, do you know anybody with a float plane? Do you know anybody with a float plane? No, do you know anybody with a float plane? Are you selling something? No, I'm not selling anything. Do you know anybody with a float plane? Then I realized, wait, I should phone places that have airplanes. <laughs> That'll like lower the number of potential phone calls. So I start phoning uh, flight schools and uh, airports and things. Do you have anybody with a float plane? Yeah, we know some people, but I know that we can't reach them or they're not interested. And, and then I stopped and I thought, wait a second. Float plane? Like that's a, what about a chopper? Wouldn't that be cool? Like, can you imagine? No, you wouldn't do that part. But. I was like, oh, this would be so cool. So I started, planning, started phoning places with helicopters. Like, do you have any helicopters in Chinaguchi Waterway? And they go, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, one of them said, we do. I said, cool, how much is it going to cost? They said, 20,000 bucks. I said, I have to go. I can't. Yes, I can't do that. Another place, we do have one, but it's putting out forest fires. And I thought, well, I can't do That's not going to work then, clearly. Um, so then I went back to the float plane thing, and I started, and I phoned this one guy, and he said, wow, you really, really want to do this, don't you? And I said, yeah, how can you tell? He said, because you called me half an hour ago. <laughs> I went, wow, that's interesting. What did you say then? He said, I, I said, no. I said, what are you going to say this time? <laughs> he said, I like your passion. Let me... Let me, let me call you back. Can we agree when someone else feels your passion and your energy that you're trying to pull off something really cool? Can you agree they kind of want on board, yes or no? And it's amazing. When people see there's a thing happening, they're like, I want to be part of that thing. But sometimes it takes that first person to start the thing. Now, what I find interesting is... Uh, if I, if I think back to my early 20s, we used to go uh, downtown uh, Toronto. We would go clubbing. We'd go to the club district, and there'd be these bars and, and nightclubs, and there'd be a place with like a lineup and 100 and 150 people in line. Do you know what I'm talking about? And there'd be another one that's totally empty. And the one, in the, the one that had the big line, it had like cars pulling up and people moving around the red rope and stuff like that. And, and they'd, they'd, uh, they'd, you'd walk up to the club and all you'd hear is a... <laughs> and then the door would open and you'd hear... <laughs> and then the door would close. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? And then you go to another nightclub and it's like... It's just that one bouncer standing there, hi, nobody's here. Which one would we want to go to? The one with 150 people or the one with nobody? The one with the... We'd go to the one that was an act a big thing. Yes or no? So we'd actually line up. People want to go to a thing that other people are going to and other people are involved in. And sometimes starting a movement is an interesting one. You just need one other person to then join your little movement. Now you're two people and you, and you start to grow... Uh, something exciting, but you just need one other person to see your passion, your excitement. This guy goes, I'll call you back. I said, okay. Which, generally speaking, is Canadian for, um, I'm never calling you again. I don't know if we're all very polite. Um, but he calls back and he says, hey, listen, I want you to phone this guy's name, JR. Um, just call him and tell him who you are. I said, oh, okay, cool. So I phoned JR and I said, uh, hey, JR, it's uh, Chris Cummins phoning. Do you know why I'm calling? He said, yes, I do. I said, um, cool. He said, but I want to hear it from you first. I said, oh, okay, cool. Uh, well, Chinaguchi Waterway, uh, girlfriend, uh, girl power canoe trip weekend, uh, you know, a couple of nights away, uh, land, float plane, understand you have a float plane ring in pocket, etc. And I said, do you want to do that? And he goes, yeah, let's do it. I went, no way. Do you know that feeling? It's awesome. Because you, you push me all day, all day, I'm phoning all these places, and finally, at the end of the day, I'm like, holy cow, we're going to do this? Yeah, let's go. So I finally, I get in the car, and I realize, wait a second, um, I, haven't, I haven't asked m my in-laws for permission. I should probably go do that, because I'm a bit of a traditionalist, whatever. So um, I, I phoned them up. We, live in, we lived at the time very close to one another, and I phoned them up, and I said, hi, uh, it's Chris. I'm, I'm in the neighborhood. I thought I'd pop in and say hello, which I'd never done previously. And uh, they said, oh, you want to pop in and say hello? Well, that's adorable. Sure, why don't you come by and say hello? Turns out they knew exactly what I was doing because I was so nervous. Do you know that feeling? <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> so I show up at their place, and, uh, and, and I babble for about 45 minutes because I'm all panicked and stressed. You know when you're panicked and stressed, you lose water in your mouth, and you, you, know, you can't think straight? You got one chance, one opportunity. You got vomit on my sweater, mom's spaghetti. <laughs> You're panicked. 
So uh, eventually, I said, hey, let me tell you the reason why I'm stopping by. And it's like, hey, he's doing it. Oh, is he? Okay. I said, I wonder if I ask your daughter's hand in marriage. Uh, and they pulled out a bottle of champagne from underneath the couch. And they're like, here, we're expecting you. <laughs> I was like, but why'd you make me do like the 45 minute? I was great watching you squirm. Get out of here. Go. So I drive up to uh, Sudbury, and uh, I sleep in my car outside of the uh, only Starbucks in Sudbury, Ontario. And I, I went in the next morning to, to Starbucks. I, I put on a fresh shirt, put some water in my hair. I got four grande lattes, extra hot. I drove over to JR's place, rang the doorbell. His wife answered, oh, JR's around back. OK, cool. So JR opens up the gate, and he goes, oh, cool. OK, you brought some coffees. That's great. He said, listen, which lakes are they going to be on? And I said, oh, they could be on Chinaguchi Lake. They might be on Wolf Lake. They might be on any number of the, and he goes, whoa, whoa, stop. Wolf Lake? I said, yeah. He goes, wow, if they're, uh, how do I tell you this? If they're on Wolf Lake, Wolf Lake is too small. If they're on Wolf Lake, we can't do this. You know that feeling? <laughs> you see a trend here? And I said, wow, uh, I'm starting to get all panicked. And not a word of a lie, he smiles. He turns toward the house. He yells really loud, hey, honey, yes? Can I borrow your plane? <laughs> what? Pardon? I can show you on Google Maps if you want. They have his and her float planes. This is fascinating to me. They've got a five-seater Cessna 172 and then a two-seater Piper Super Cub, fully restored, 1965. Same vintage, same airplane, and it's small enough to land on Wolf Lake. So we get in the plane, and it goes... And I'm like, wow, it's 1965. They haven't made a lot of changes, I guess, to the engine. And, and so we, we taxi to the end of the lake, and, and he just guns it. Now, just before he does, he goes, you know, you can still get out of this. And I was like, no, we're doing it. Okay, cool. So we then guns up, and the plane is hardly moving. And I'm like, this is going to take a long time, because I can run faster. And then and eventually it starts picking up a bit of speed, and starts picking up a bit of speed, a bit more momentum. The engine's working so hard, and it picks up a bit more momentum. Do you know, do you know what I'm talking about? And eventually the, the, the pontoons, they start planing, they start riding on top of the water, and it picks up a bit more speed. And then when they pop off the water, the plane just sort of, and we're going you know, 150 or some odd kilometers an hour, and we do this huge banking turn. And just over the Sudbury Hospital, we see the big nickel and the huge smokestack in Sudbury. And we start flying out, and he goes, okay, so what color canoes are we looking for? I said, uh, red or, or blue, I can't remember. And he goes, how are we going to find them? I said, oh, don't worry. I said to Barb, uh, if, you see a, if you see a float plane, wave, and, and that way I'll know. <laughs> do you, do you want to know what everybody does when they see a float plane? <laughs> They're like, hi, how are you? If you're not Barb, stop waving. Ah. So eventually we fly out, and we, we find them. And we see there's the campsite, and there they are. Wow, so cool. There's Barb. Hey, over here. And uh, so we do this huge banking turn. And then we're just about to land on Wolf Lake. And there's Sheila in the middle of the lake pumping water to, through this water filter to, to make some coffee or something in the morning, because we're there pretty early in the morning. And uh, Wolf Lake's pretty small. And she's in the middle of the lake. We're and I said, uh, are we going to hit her? Uh, he goes, and then he laughs. And he goes, yeah, it's going to be close, though. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sheila's screaming at the shore, you moron, you just flagged down a float plane. Ah! And she's paddling toward the shore as fast as she can. We turn toward the shore. He cuts the engine. We do this nice little coast. Ba-boom. Ties it to a tree. Uh, uh, he hops out and, and steps away. And I hop out as well. And I grab the grande lattes, extra hot. Sheila paddles into the shore. And then you can see her. She looks over. She goes, Chris, I told you you couldn't come. <laughs> she knows I'm a bit crazy. I do stuff like that. And, and I said, I know, I brought you some lattes. And, and then JR sees me starting to come unglued. Can we agree when you go embark on something that's a little bit scary, sometimes you get freaked out and stressed, yes or no? Sometimes you just need one other person to see that and help pick up the pieces. And sometimes they were along with you from the ride, from the first origin of the idea. Some of those people you met here, for example. JR says, hey, I got this. He takes her up in the float plane. He sweeps her away and says, let's go on a little journey. So they take off. They fly over all the parklands and things. And then they land uh, back at the, at the shore. And they, they come up and they tie the thing to a tree. And JR steps out of the way. And I grabbed Sheila's hand. I said, Sheila, was that a cool adventure? As she's stepping off the plane, she goes, oh my gosh, it was an amazing adventure. It was so cool. We saw the, the uh, portage and the campsites and all this stuff. And I said, do you, do you by any chance want to go on more adventures with me? And she, does, she did that. And her hand starts to shake. And she's like, oh my god. She, she couldn't even finish the sentence. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. And the hands are shaking. Oh. And, 
And so then I bend down on one knee, and I'm crying like a baby, and she's crying like a baby, and there's this like pink scarf around her neck blowing in the breeze, and you can see the, the Canadian Shield rocks, you can see the trees and things in the background, and there's a picture that JR took with the back tail of the float plane, uh, and I'm on my knee, and Sheila's got her, her pink scarf, and, and that's when she said, no, no, I'm kidding. She, <laughs> that's, that's when she said yes. And it was pretty cool. And so any of my friends who... Yeah. Thank you. Now, any of my friends who've seen that picture, they're like, wow, that would, I don't know if I could have done that. That would have been a lot of work. Let's be honest, it was pretty hard, eh? I was like, yeah, it was, it was kind of challenging. And some of my friends were saying, you know, what if you can't find them? I said, what if we can? What if you run out of gas? What if we don't run out of gas? What if the weather sucks? What if the weather's awesome? See, what you're thinking about changes your feelings, which affects your actions, which always changes your outcome. If you're always looking for obstacles, I promise you'll find them, yes or no? If you're always looking for opportunities and these little sparks of cool ideas that happen at a place like TEDx where you have a cool networking opportunity to hear from other people who've started really interesting movements and then watch some films and watch a musician as well, it just sparks a couple of ideas. My name is Chris Cummins and I passionately believe it just takes a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens to change the world. In fact, those aren't my words. I'm trying to recall if it was either Margaret Mead or Maya Angelou. But don't doubt for a second that it's a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. But it all starts with one kernel of an idea. You've already started originating them here. It's been a tremendous honor to be your master of ceremonies today. I want to say thank you so much. And on the count of three, I want to see if we can thank the TEDx organizers and everybody who put this on, anybody who had any hand in bringing you to this event. Let's make a ton of noise in this room. One, let's do this. Two, come on, three.